Hello all, and welcome in. We're so glad you've joined us for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. Life can be rough sometimes, so please, pull up a chair here in the library and relax for a while as we dive deep into the latest books we've crossed off our endless to-read list. Please be warned that spoilers lie ahead and some content might not be suitable for all listeners, so please, go check out the show notes for content warnings regarding today's book and discussion before moving ahead with the episode. Ready? Then let's get our book nerd on. Even in the last few decades, technology has reached unfathomable levels of sophistication. Every day, we essentially carry the entire world in our pocket, with access to any piece of information we could ever need, and the ability to talk to people anywhere in the world, at any time. As stunning as this thought is, however, no iPhone could ever be quite as impressive as the power of Mother Nature herself. Over the millions of years that life has existed on Earth, nature has always found ways to adapt and survive against incredible odds. Some plants and animals, for instance, can blend into their environment to ensure that predators can't find them. Some emit poisons or noxious fumes when predators approach to detract any would-be attackers from eating them. Some predators can even imitate their prey to draw in their next meal. Scientists have spent eons trying to unravel the mysteries of the natural world, but every day they always end up finding more questions than answers. In the marvelous book that we'll be discussing today, This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron, we meet a girl who takes the term green thumb to a whole new level. She was born with all the powers of nature at her fingertips, but this rare magic proves to be both a blessing and a curse. As our book opens, a man named Mr. Hughes makes his weekly pilgrimage to his favorite flower shop. Like clockwork, he orders a dozen white roses every Sunday to lovingly place on his late wife's grave. The owner of the shop is clearly very sorry to inform him that this week their shipment of roses is late, but that she might be able to help him find something else in the meantime. The shop owner's daughter, who is nearby, can't help but feel devastated for the poor man and desperately wishes to help him. She sees that there is a single white rose shoot left and instantly takes it to the back. Focusing on her ability to make plants grow, she makes the seedlings sprout into six new blooms and presents them to the incredibly grateful Mr. Hughes, who promises them a peach cobbler as repayment. Once the man leaves the shop, the girl's mother thanks her for her kindness and advises her not to overdo her magic, which may seriously harm her. She also assures her daughter that the shop will be alright, and that she should use her summer vacation to relax. Briseis, her daughter, and our protagonist obliges and heads to their apartment. She goes to her room, which is strewn with potted plants that all reach out to greet her, and opens her laptop. She had signed up for a summer school class on botany, which she had hoped would help her better understand her powers, and is eager to find the results of her application. When Brise checks her email, she is deeply upset to find that she had not been accepted after all. Needing to blow off some steam, Brise heads back to the flower shop. She tells her parents, Mom and Mo, that she will be at the park. Mom and Mo know that the park is a difficult place for her due to the abundant plant life that reaches out for her wherever she passes, but they reluctantly agree, and their daughter sets off. At the park, Brise goes to check on an experiment that she had secretly been working on, a severely poisonous water hemlock plant that she'd been growing. Seeing that it has matured, she digs it up and puts it in a bag to take it home and study it. As she is running an experiment back in her room, Mo enters and causes Brise to accidentally cut herself. Such an injury from such a notorious poisonous plant 
should have killed her instantly. Strangely enough, she is shocked to find that she has not been affected at all, which tells her that there may be more to her powers than she'd realized. Not knowing where else to turn, she calls her former best friend Gabby, but Gabby merely tells her to stop being so weird about plants. The next morning, Brise wakes to find her parents discussing the increased price of rent for their apartment and business. They are having an incredibly hard time making ends meet as it is, but the cost of living has become almost untenable. They will need to figure out how to make things work, but for now, they decide to ease the tension and grab some bagels from their favorite bagel shop for breakfast. On the way, a couple of trees start leaning towards Brise as she passes by, which causes her to almost want to turn around. Thankfully, she can get it to stop and they get their bagels without incident. Not long after this event, however, Mom gets a phone call that will change everything. Mom and Mo had adopted Brise when she was just a baby, and are all the family that she'd ever known. Brise had never communicated with her birth mother, and so she is shocked to find that her biological aunt had left her an estate in her will, including a huge old house in the country. It seems so strange that her biological family would want to reach out to her now, after all this time, but such an opportunity seems to be just the change they need. Brise talks it through with Mom and Mo, and the three ultimately decide to give the house a chance. They drive out to the small, seemingly friendly town of Rhinebeck to check it out and find a sprawling Victorian manor covered with vines. As they go inside and explore, Brise is even more fascinated to find that one of the rooms was used as an apothecary, with rows and rows of jars containing different medicinal herbs and plants inside. After all these years, could this place finally help Brise find out where her powers had come from? Just who had her birth mother been? and what other secrets could be hiding in these walls, just waiting to be discovered. It looks like we need to step away for just a moment, dear book nerds. But don't worry, we'll be right back after this very short break. Don't go anywhere. Are you an author? fellow podcaster, or small business owner looking to spread the word about your product or service? Then let us help you. We offer a number of affordable monthly advertising packages in various price ranges, so if you'd like to hear your ad here in future episodes, please head on over to our page at ko slash bndpod and click on the shop tab to see what works best for you. Again, that's ko-fi.com slash bndpod then click on the shop tab. We can't wait to work with you. When it comes to looking for new books, two things instantly catch my eye. Magic and a good mystery. I love books that bend the rules of our modern world and make you think, so any story that combines these two elements immediately goes on my list. With the book This Poison Heart, by Kaylin Bayron, that's exactly what you get in spades. In one way, it's a sort of haunted house story, sans the ghosts. Getting to live in the house her biological mother and aunt had once spent their days, she finds little pieces of their lives everywhere, giving her clues to who they were, and how much her fate is tied with theirs. Even more than this are the townsfolk of Rhinebeck, who suddenly start showing up at the door. This apothecary business, it turns out, had once been a cornerstone of the community, and one that Brise is now expected to carry on. Though Rhinebeck seems like your average American small town, she soon finds that there is far more going on beneath the surface than she could have imagined. The brilliant movie Get Out is jokingly referenced more than once by name, and it happens to be a much more apt comparison than the characters might have realized. Though Brise's birth mother, Celine, and biological aunt, Cersei, are both gone, 
she is still confronted with the specters of what they had left behind and must find a way to deal with their legacy. She had never met these people in her life, and she is beyond happy with the loving family that she's built with Mom and Mo. So she finds herself ultimately torn between these two parts of herself, and must find some way to reconcile them, to find her own way in the world. On top of this, she must also learn to deal with her powers, which makes her feel so far removed from everyone else around her. This Poison Heart is, at its core, a powerful story about identity and claiming your truth, which just happens to have some magic mixed in. It's incredibly fun and suspenseful until the very end, perfectly balancing quieter family moments with deep lore and intense confrontations. Such pacing can be sort of tricky when it comes to YA stories, but I'm very happy to say that Kaylin Bayron manages it with ease. Though there are very few major action sequences here, I still found myself absolutely enthralled the entire way through, and I cannot wait to read the sequel. If you're a fan of modern set fantasy stories, like the Raven Cycle series or the Mortal Instruments, then this Poison Heart might just be for you. It's heartwarming, scary, and beautiful all at the same time, and I promise you will not be bored. I will reiterate here, however, that some elements might not be for everyone, so please be sure to check out the content warnings in our show notes before picking up this marvelous book for yourself. It is here, dear book nerds, that today's discussion has come to an end. We're so glad to have shared another amazing book with you, and we truly do hope you've enjoyed your visit to the library today as much as we've enjoyed having you here. Before we leave you for now, however, we have some very special thank yous to give out. Firstly, thank you so much to Julie, our amazing sister Katie, and newest team member Anthony for being our benevolent subscribers over at patreon.com slash bndpod. This podcast helps us keep the lights on here at the library, so we truly can't do what we do without your kind monthly contributions. If you, too, would like to get perks like early ad-free episodes, two exclusive episodes a month, notes, scripts, our monthly newsletter, and a special role in our Discord server, we hope you'll join them. Our deepest gratitude also goes out to anyone who has taken the time to share our episodes on social media, left us a review on Apple Podcasts or their app of choice, or told the people in their lives about us. These are the best free ways to help bring more people to the library, and independent operations like ours depend on word of mouth to grow, so every bit truly helps. Next week, Friday, August 5th, a new bonus episode is on the way for our wonderful $5 and up subscribers on Patreon. And we'll see you right back here in two weeks for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. See you then! The Book Nerd Diaries is written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you so much to the wonderful Astro Freck from Pixabay for the use of our theme song, The Grand Entrance. Any other music and sound effects you may have heard during this episode are also provided by the amazing folks of Pixabay, so please check out the show notes for full credits. If you'd like to connect with us online, please follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPod, on Facebook at Book Nerd Diaries, or via our website at bndpod.wordpress.com. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes to send my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everyone, please be good to yourselves, because the world needs you. And don't forget to support your local library.